There are many reasons why you should totally go to art school, but there are also many reasons why you shouldn't. Maybe it's financially not feasible. Most art schools are going to cost you upwards of a quarter of a million dollars for a four-year degree with no guarantee of employment after graduation. Let's be honest, unless you have a trust fund or are willing to pay on student loans for the next 30 years, art school just isn't an option. Or maybe you have a health condition that prevents you from regularly attending class, or maybe you just don't learn well in a classroom environment. So you've decided that for whatever reason, art school is not an option for you. Well, grab your learning caps, kids, because today I'm going to teach you how to create your own DIY art school. Designing and fulfilling your own art education takes a lot of time and discipline. You're your own teacher, and you're in charge of making sure you're doing your homework. Now, don't click out if discipline isn't a quality you've mastered yet. I definitely haven't. Like anything, discipline can be learned. One of the things that is, to put it bluntly, stupid about art school is the required classes that have absolutely nothing to do with the art you want to make. Now don't get me wrong, if you want to learn art, you've got to learn and practice the unfun fundamentals. That's just a given. But I really don't think you should be required to take a pottery class if you're pursuing a career in background design for animation. Because we're designing our own curriculum, we have full control over what classes we're taking. Now there's a few different sources we can go to for our learning. Books, lectures and podcasts, and online or in-person classes. Now before you get all up in arms about why am I taking an online class if the point is to learn on your own? Newsflash, the term self-taught is a little bit skewed in the art world. No one is truly self-taught. We're all constantly learning from watching other artists create on YouTube, reading art books, and observing art on social media. The point here is that you have control over what in-person or online classes you take that fit into what field of art you want to pursue. There are infinite resources out there for you to pick from. The first thing you need to ask yourself is what avenue of art do you want to pursue? It's okay if you don't have a 10,000% fully figured out game plan for your art career, but you might want to have a little bit of direction. If you aren't quite sure about exactly what field you want to be in, try narrowing it down to an umbrella category like animation or fine art, illustration. Set aside five minutes of your time to really just get clear on your artistic goals. It's a lot harder to learn if you don't have any idea what you want to learn. Next, we need to figure out how you learn. Understanding how you as an individual learn best is crucial. Maybe you're a hands-on learner and really need to try something yourself to understand it. Maybe you learn best from reading a book or hearing a lecture. Maybe you learn best by watching someone else do it first. Or maybe you're a combination of all of the above. Creating your own DIY art school means you get to decide how you learn, not just what you learn. You get to tailor your education to your specific needs. Do you zone out listening to podcasts or hearing a lecture? Then maybe recorded seminars aren't really your thing. I love to read, but I get really overwhelmed by super large textbooks. Sometimes I understand a concept best by hearing someone explain it, and other times I need to watch them physically do it to comprehend what the heck is going on. I learn best by mixing sensory learning with linguistic learning. Now take another five minutes and really think about your learning needs. Now that you've got a better grasp on how you learn, it's time to talk about some avenues of education that we can pursue. Let's start with online classes. Now there are a lot of platforms online for taking classes that fit every single budget. If you want to go the free route, YouTube will be your best friend. Just search for the type of class or lesson that you're looking for, like how to draw hands or background design 101, and a wealth of information is going to pop up. If you really don't have a wallet for your art education right now, start there. Now, if you're ready to invest some money into your education, I think the best place to do that is Schoolism. Not sponsored, by the way, I'm just a really big fan. Schoolism has over 50 classes in everything from figure drawing to visual development to book illustration to storyboarding. It's a flat $30 a month for a by the month subscription, and you get access to all of the classes as well as the exclusive live workshops that they do. Oh yeah, and each of these classes is taught by a professional artist who's actually passionate about what they're teaching. I think this is one of the really big downfalls of the school system, and that many of the teachers just aren't excited about what they're teaching. If they don't care about the subject, then why should you? But the schoolism teachers are truly invested in what they're teaching and have been doing it for years. 
It's pretty hard to be unmotivated to learn and practice when the teacher's enthusiasm is contagious. If you aren't quite sure yet what field of art you want to pursue, I would definitely recommend Robert Kondo and Daisu Sumi's Painting with Color and Light class. I've been unable to decide between pursuing visual development or creating my own path as an independent artist, but this class crosses over into both. They teach you how to actually understand color and light theory and to create amazing paintings from life and apply what you learn to painting from imagination. Fair warning, you're gonna do a lot of value and color still lifes with this class, but it is absolutely worth it. I saw a huge improvement in my personal paintings after just the first couple of lessons. Word of wisdom though, do not try to cram this eight week class into four weeks. You're gonna regret it. Don't be me guys, be smart. I've also taken a class or two on Domestica and have other artist friends who take Skillshare classes and 21 Draw classes. All of these are really great platforms where you can learn from some of your favorite artists and at a fraction of the price of art school. If you don't want to commit to a full month subscription, Domestica allows you to purchase singular courses so you can go at your own pace. You also get to share your progress with the teacher and the other students to receive critiques and feedback. This brings me to a bonus tip. Make sure you have some sort of art community that you can grow with. This can be a few artist friends on Instagram, a Discord or Facebook group, anywhere you can actively learn from other artists and encourage one another in your creative journeys. Let me be clear on this, your art account on Instagram is not your community. Do not take the advice of random people on the internet as gospel. While there are many encouraging and helpful people out there, there's also a ton of trolls who offer up really crappy and subjective advice. So make sure you're seeking advice and feedback from artists that you trust. The next place we can seek knowledge is books. One of my absolute favorite place to learn is books. I know I talk about it all the time, but <laughs> I like reading, guys. My mama always taught me that if you can read, you can learn anything. When buying books to educate yourself in art, you need to have a good grasp on where you're at in your art journey. If you haven't yet learned the fundamentals, I'd recommend starting there. They're called the fundamentals for a reason because you use them in literally every avenue of art. Because my primary fields of art at this point have been illustration and visual development, my book collection is very much a reflection of that. I have a couple of figure drawing books, tons of art of books, and a few books from some independent artists. Late last year, I realized just how lacking my knowledge of human anatomy and gesture drawing was. My figures were looking really wonky, and I just couldn't figure out what was off about them. I've been working through Robert Oste's Dynamic Human Anatomy book, and my figures have greatly improved. Even if you want to draw more stylized or cartoony characters, having at least a base knowledge of anatomy is exceedingly helpful. This book teaches you how to understand proportions and movement to draw characters in a more exciting and dynamic way. I've been following along in my sketchbook and I've already seen a lot of improvement just in the first few chapters. Like I said, I have a ton of art of insert your favorite movie here books. Though I'm stuck between visual development and illustration, these books can easily be applied to both. In both biz dev and illustration, the goal is to tell a story. The Art Of book teaches you how to bring life to every character, prop, and environment. I think these books are also really encouraging and that they teach you that it is okay to fail, that failure is a crucial part of the process. These books show you that there was not a clear, smooth path to creating these movies. Every element went through many different iterations to arrive at the one that best tells the story. Sometimes you have to create the wrong piece 50 times before you can create the right one. The last type of book I like to learn from is Art of Artists books. These are books containing the art and advice of just one person. Now not every person's style of art appeals to me, and that's totally okay. When buying books from artists, I choose the ones that have a particular painting style I like, or a storytelling element I can't quite grasp, or maybe the way they design backgrounds fascinates me. Two of the artists I have books from are digital artists, and I don't even do much digital art. But their styles and their storytelling really appeal to me. So I read their books, look through their tutorials, and basically stare at their illustrations for hours. <laughs> Just because they're digital artists doesn't mean I can't apply some of their techniques to my own traditional art. 
but I like reading through these books with a very clear goal of what I want to learn from them. I also really enjoy listening to lectures and podcasts. This can be especially nice to listen to while I'm actively painting or drawing. Some of my favorites are the Make Art Don't Starve podcast with Kelsey Rodriguez and Lil Star Nerd, the Laura Horn Art podcast, One Fantastic Week, the Draftsman podcast, and the Bobby Chu artist interviews. Some of these are more business-based and some are more art-based. I think if you're wanting to be a professional artist, both are very, very important. To be a professional artist, you need non-art skills too, such as good communication or social skills, maybe basic accounting or marketing. Or maybe you need to understand the animation pipeline. There are so many podcasts out there on every art topic you could imagine. These artists share the good, the bad, and the ugly of being a professional artist. These artists want to see you succeed. They're ready and willing to share their knowledge with you. The final method I want to talk about is personal study. Now this is a more practice-based learning method. For example, at the beginning of 2022, I challenged myself to create 100 gouache movie scene studies over the course of the year. I wanted to better familiarize myself with gouache and improve my color mixing skills. So that gives me a quantity goal, 100 studies, skill goals, understanding of the medium and color theory, and a time frame, one year. But throughout the first couple of weeks, I realized I needed a little bit more structure in my goal. That 100 number was really daunting. That's why I decided to create themes. Every set of five paintings would be centered around a theme like architecture or interior design, facial expressions. It made the giant goal of 100 scene studies much more manageable by breaking it down into bite-sized tasks. Many people do the 100 heads challenge to better understand portrait art, or maybe you make a goal to study from life once a week. Drawing from life will greatly improve your observational skills and build a mental library of things you can paint or draw. You can be as loose or as structured with personal study as you want, but I'd encourage you to have a clear goal going into it. Don't just say, I'm going to paint a dog portrait every week. Get clear on why you want to paint a dog portrait. Is it to better understand how to paint fur, or maybe to capture the facial expressions of dogs? Have a goal for what you're studying on your own time. So we've discussed a few ways of gathering information, but the hardest work is putting it into practice. And this is something that only you can do. All the head knowledge in the world means absolutely nothing if you don't put in the time and the effort to learn to put it on the page. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Art is hard. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of patience, failure, and grace on yourself. Now, I personally do believe that a certain amount of art is talent. Some people are just born with a better grasp of composition or color or the ability to control a paintbrush. But talent only gets you so far. There's a difference between talent and skill. Talent is innate, but skill is learned. Skill comes from taking those classes, reading those books, studying from life, listening to podcasts, and putting it into practice. Taking what you've learned and doing something with it. Take that figure drawing knowledge and start practicing drawing figures from imagination. Take that mental library you've built up from life drawings and start illustrating more complex environments. Create master copies of the illustrations in your art books. You have to make the choice to practice. No one else can do it for you. Because I'm working on building a professional career as I'm working through my DIY art school, sometimes I have to mix professional work with practice. That can look like practicing plant studies and brushwork in a client's illustration commission, or creating figure studies with the supplies a brand sends me. You can make your art education work for you as an individual, but you have to put in the time and the effort to make that happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful for you and gave you a better insight into how to build an art education that works for you. If you like my art and want to see more of it, head on over to Patreon to join the troupe. And if you're interested in owning some of my artwork, there's a link down in the description to my Etsy shop where you can collect stickers, originals, and prints. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!